Teresa, hey, congratulations for being on Thank season you. two of Luis Miguel. Thank you. Hey, so you play a serious character, Azucena, a businesswoman that makes Luis Miguel aware about a certain employee and possible okay. hearing loss. Now, we understand why you didn't discuss about uh, your part participation in the series before, but how were you able to keep it to yourself for so, so long? It was really hard. I was, I was telling someone that the creation of my character was, I think it was equally as creative as not revealing anything <laughs> through almost a year. It was so hard to be in a project that you couldn't say anything, yet everybody would ask me every day, like not just press. It was like my friends, and other people, my family. I would, it was everybody just wanted to know and I couldn't tell. I couldn't say anything about my character and I couldn't say anything about the, the show. And it became like, it became even for me, it became fun to, how do I say this without saying it? How do I like, you know, it became like a really creative exercise. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did it. You did a really good job because I remember <laughs> asking you that question and you totally like deflected it. <laughs> and like, you know, and it was fun to like deflect without, without beat, you know, cause like the first time I answered the question, it was like, oh, well, sorry. <laughs> So it was like, how do I do that? How do I? How do... <laughs> it was fun. It was pretty fun. Well, good, good thing. Good thing the show, the show is out now. So yes. now, now, now you could talk about it. Yes. Can you share the moment how you found out how you got the role? Mm, well, I, I actually, so they had started the second season before COVID hit. And then they, they stopped I, and I was doing another project and, and then, the show stopped and when they were going to restart it's when this character was was going to come in but originally they had thought of this character to be a man because it is a compilation of different people in the life of Luis Miguel and they thought it would be a man and then they they decided that they wanted to make it a woman and so when they made that choice Diego Bonera who I had I knew his work and he was a, a friend of mine called me and said, Teresa, there's this part and we would love for you to, to play it because we, you know, we felt that we could create this relationship where we could go because a relationship grows as a progressive and trust. It grows in, in, in confidence. It grows in, in care for her, for him. And also they, they were very clear that they didn't want to make anything like romantic between them. So that was a, that was a challenge because of the way the, the show is thought of or the show is seen. So yeah, so I spoke to Diego, then I spoke to Pablo Cruz, the producer, and he told me like the, the thoughts they had on the part. And yeah, after that, I was shooting a movie in LA and it was like a big, like I had to, they like, helped me. I was doing a movie with Kevin Smith and Kevin helped me change my shooting dates. And I was like, please, I want to go to Luis Miguel. And Kevin was like, well, who is Luis Miguel? And then he Googled it. He's like, Luis Miguel is great. You have to go do it. So he helped me change all the dates, the production. It was hectic, but I made it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, even Kevin Smith was involved in this whole Luis Miguel process. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a tidbit that a lot of people didn't know about. <laughs> yeah. Which phase of Luis Miguel series do you enjoy the most for, for yourself? Which phase? Yeah, which time phase? I, I'm i not in that time phase, but I love the 80s. Luis Miguel in the 80s was everything. Everything. I mean, I, that, those are the songs that I love the most. Um, you know, like, si tu me hubiera la verdad. Like that, that kind of like 80s Latin sound and the... Um, just the, the color. I think that the first season, I as an as a just as an audience member, I absolutely love. And and um, and now that I get to work on it, it's really fun to to see that in the show, to see how the show goes back and forth between between ages. That that is certainly true. What did uh, Luis Miguel mean to you when you were growing up? Well, I was. I have a very vivid memory of my father holding me up as a little girl and, and him singing. 
I remember that clearly. And my mom says, now that I did the show, I don't remember this very well, but my mom says that I was a big, big fan of Luis Miguel and Luis Miguel's music. And with my little diaper, I would dance around the house to his music. And that would be the only thing that would keep me from following her around everywhere. So whenever she wanted to leave the house and leave me there with my, with my grandma or with my brother, she'll play Luis Miguel and I'll start spinning around with my eyes closed and then she'll, you know, run out. So, so Luis Miguel was, I guess now I'm taking care of him, but when I was a little girl, it was his music that took care of me. <laughs> so, so your family was, was certainly proud that you're part of the series. Oh, my mom was thrilled. Like a lot of the, the things that I do, she, she's happy because I like them. I'm, I'm happy. I'm creative. I'm, I'm doing what I love to do. But a lot of the things she doesn't know, she doesn't have the magnitude of it. And, and this one, I made a special Zoom to tell her because I knew it was going to be special for her. So like I, I told my brother, get my mom and my dad together, sit him down. <laughs> and then, you know, we were all there. And I said, I'm going to do Luis Miguel. And they were thrilled. They were like beyond excited. And now my mom, every Sunday, she's, you know, there religiously. <laughs> <laughs> How, how do you feel about the, um, the Luis Miguel series after watching the series, knowing that, uh, you know, some of the stuff is fictionalized? How do I, um, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know that it's fictionalized. I think all of it did happen. It's just maybe rearranged or presented in a way that is more, you know, that has a more in the, in the dramatic uh, or, you know, uh, structure. But I think what is beautiful about the show is that a lot, most of it is true. Most of it happened and it happened that way. And there's still so many things that are to come for the series that we haven't seen that are heartbreaking. And to know that that happened to this artist that we love so much, that we care for so much. I think my character is a bit that, is a bit like the eyes of the audience. The eyes of the audience that want him to be well, that want him to... To, uh, to have a good life as well as a great career. And, and uh, that, that is a, a, a thing the series has brought to me, which is whenever I, now I hear a song of Luis Miguel, I know what's behind that song. I know the story of that song and it breaks my heart even more. What was your first reaction when you saw the aged uh, makeup of uh, Diego B. Banana? I, I think I didn't say anything. I just... Like he walked up to me and I was like, and I just didn't, you know, pretended I didn't, there was no change. <laughs> and then like, and I guess I, I, well, actually I integrated that a lot to my character. With that reaction, I thought, oh, so that's how she would feel to, to meet him, you know, to meet this artist that he had this idea of, you know, meet and, you know try to, try to keep it together. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you have played so many wonderful roles in, in, in your career. How, what, what is the typical requirement to make you choose to play these characters? It mostly has been the filmmakers and the, and the actors that I work with. I mean, of course, the script, but it, it, it usually has been that. Like, I'm, for me, it's usually like such and such is going to make this project. So because to me, it's the, the, the artist who makes it is how the the final product is going to turn in and also the kind of experience that I'm going to have while doing it. And I think all through my life, it's been very important to have a good experience while I'm shooting, to have a creative experience because in the end, that's all you keep, the process and the memories of the process. And then once it's out, you know, now Luis Miguel is out and I sit every Sunday, like every other audience member with popcorn and I watch it and I enjoy it. But it's, that's no... The, not mine anymore excellent well one, one one last thing before i let you go in audiences and press probably ask you over and over again what is your favorite luis miguel song i think i really like that one uh, that one i love and i love the video <laughs> <laughs> Excellent answer. Well, today, uh, hey, thank you very much for speaking with me, and um, and we enjoyed the series.